hello everyone uh, welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more so in today's session uh, we'll be seeing about the consent the last class uh, we had covered uh, the ethical principles so i was talking about the most uh, vital principle that is autonomy so in autonomy that is uh, respect for person the respecting the persons to choose the decision so that is the consent so most of the experiments which was uh, uh, which was done uh, in the last uh, 1915 the prior to 1915 time all were without any consent so in today's uh, world or in present scenario the most important ethical principle is autonomy or the consent so if we do any study if we are doing any procedure any medical procedure or even if we are doing a questionnaire study we need to get a proper written consent otherwise uh, it will not be valid it will not be accepted anywhere so the consent is the most crucial principle of ethics so let's see uh, what is the definition given by the indian contract act 1872 the consent is defined as when two or more person agree upon the same thing in the same sense they are said to be consent so who can give consent so who are the eligible people uh, can give a consent so consent can be given by any conscious mentally sound people with uh, 12 years or more so that is uh, given in the indian penal court 1860 so that is under coming section 88 and 90 so that is consent consent can be given by people with 12 years or more conscious and mentally sound but regarding the contract that should be above 18 years if two people are entering into a contract both parties should be more than 18 years then only it become a valid contract can be produced to court as a contract under contract law the doctor patient relationship is also considered as a contract so it is always advisable that a doctor should get a proper written consent from the patient if the patient is a minor that is less than 18 years the consent should be obtained from the patient's parent or guardian who is definitely will be more than 18 years so it is always advisable to get a written consent then only it will be uh, if any problem arises you can produce it as an evidence in the court otherwise uh, it cannot be produced as a proper evidence so when consent is not valid if a person is giving consent under fear fraud or misinterpretation of facts by any person who is ignorant of the implication or who is under 12 years all this become invalid if uh, the fear or we are uh, trying to misinterpret the real facts and getting the consent and a person who is very ignorant about the outcome and implication of the consent like a mad person or a very uh, rebellious type person who is mentally not conscious not sound or anyone who is under 12 years all these concerns will not be valid so these are the basic types of consent that is implied consent express consent informed and proxy consent so in various instances in our medical practices all these are coming into action that is first to an implied or tacit consent it is just like it is a default consent if you are going to a doctor if you are going to a dentist the implied consent is automatically there because we are ready to get examined we are okay to get examined we are giving consent to get examined otherwise we wouldn't have gone there we wouldn't have gone to the patient to the dentist or a doctor if we are going there it means that we are ready to get examined so that is implied consent or tacit consent but whereas it doesn't imply that this examination involves very complex procedures 
that inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation, and routine sonography. Examination which involves blood, uh, drawing of blood for the diagnostic purpose, always express consent. The express consent should be there. That is, patient should express his consent orally or in a written format. Then only we can do the procedure. So let's see what is oral and express consent. So express consent. So basically we have two types. It is uh, not like um, the tacit or implied consent. It is tacit or implied consent is automatically comes when a patient enters to a clinic or when a patient appears before a doctor. But the express consent is different. The patient has to express it. For a general uh, examination, uh, the tacit or implied consent is fine, but more um, complicated or less complicated. The express uh, consent should be there. So oral consent is obtained for uh, minor examinations, therapeutic procedures, preferably in the presence of a disinterested third party. There should be always a third party. That should not be the relative. It should be a disinterested third party. So express consent, if it is in the oral form, we can get it for a minor examination. But if it is a very uh, complicated like general anesthesia for any surgical operation, we should always get an expressed written consent, not oral consent. Written consent should be obtained for all major diagnostic procedure that is they are expressing it not just implying it so oral consent for the minor procedures and the written consent for the major procedures so these are the express consent so implied consent and the express consent so next comes the informed consent so the express consent the problem is uh, the patient might not be knowing in detail about the um, procedure complications procedure detailing uh, the other options so the patient the doctor says that this patient needs surgery the patient or bystander or any third party is giving a consent but the informed consent is the most perfect consent where the patient or the party uh, the participant will be knowing about in and out of the procedure that is what is the diagnosis what is the nature of treatment is being given what are the risks involved in the procedure and what would be the success and prognosis if the procedure is not performed and if any alternative methods are available so we should tell the patient everything in patients own words that is non-medical terms patient should comprehend it so informed consent has basically few uh, attributes like it should be uh, voluntary it should be comprehensible because the patient should understand what the doctor or the researcher is saying should be able to comprehend it and the consent should be voluntarily so the patient will be informed about in detail about the procedure then patient can decide about giving a consent so that is informed consent so informed consent is the most perfect consent because the patient is in detail about the procedure just like the doctor so proxy consent is always like it can uh, all the above consent like uh, plate consent uh, express consent like oral consent implied consent is automatically there the, uh, express oral and express uh, written consent can uh, take a proxy consent like uh, parent for child if the party or the patient is a child the proxy consent can be given and for a mentally unsound unconscious patients uh, relatives can give proxy consent on behalf of these people. 
so they can give expressed oral consent or expressed written consent on behalf of these people that becomes proxy consent so situations where consent may not be obtained that is uh, medical emergencies uh, in case of persons suffering from notifiable disease for immigrants for armed forces for new admission to prisons in case of person where court may order for psychiatric examination in such cases uh, there is no need for consent and even for a request of a police so that's all about various types of consent the most important consent is informed consent so basically the types are implied or tacit consent or express consent express consent has uh, two types that is oral and uh, oral and written consent so informed consent is when the patient is being informed in and out of the procedure becomes informed consent and all of these proceed all of these consent can become a proxy consent if the patient or the participant is a child or a mentally unsound or unconscious patient so that's all about consent so consent is coming under the principle of autonomy and autonomy is the most important and most crucial principle of ethics so thank you